Turn up to this one, was the Bosch 2000, no heating was the fault. They said they had hot water. Boiler's not doing anything. Programmer's calling, but the boiler's still not doing anything. The receiver's just sat there flashing, which normally means you need to resync it. Tried resyncing, tried resetting, tried repairing, tried booting it out the window. None of the above worked. So next step is whip the case off. Just two screws on these new ones, bit easier to get to than the older model. Lift the case away with two hands rather than one because it's a bit awkward with one when you're holding the camera. That just clips down, that just pops off to expose the wiring. Well, let's whip out the breakdown Bible to see what we're working with. Scroll down to combi boiler, go to wireless controls. So switch through space, have live neutral earth straight to the boiler and then you have a live out and a live return. So let's just check that. We're getting 240 on the live. So that's all good. Now we need to check the live out to see if we're getting power to the stat. Which we are, 242 the stat. Now we've got to see if it's coming back on LR, which is not. So now we can 110% say it's the stat fault. You can tell it's a rough install, ju judging by how the, that cable grommet's cut like that. And that's meant to be a condensed pump with three cables when they're supposed to have five. Let's have a quick look. So they've cut it so short, I can't even get back onto it to correct it now. So I'll whip out the breakdown Bible and we'll have a look how it should be wired. Combi boiler with condensed pump. So it should have live neutral earth to the condensed pump. And then on that other cable with two cores, the live should pass through that to feed the boiler. So it goes for a flow switch. So if it over, overfills, it cuts the power to the boiler to stop it flooding, basically. But let's get back to the job in hand. Let's whip the front of this off and do some tests in here. Just one screw. Whip that off. So with that off, we've got 240 into the receiver, which is good. And then we've got nothing coming back. That should be alive from your LS, from your boiler. Let's see what's going on. Power to the boiler's gone by the looks of it. I would say I'm surprised, but with the state of the wiring so far, I'm not really. Let's check that. Yeah, no power to the boiler. So they've powered it through the receiver, which is a bit naughty just for the record. It's a Sunday lunchtime. Near miss is what I got in the van, so that's what's going on the wall. Let's flick the switch off. Take the fuse out. Better to be safe than sorry. Oh, that don't look like a free amp fuse to me. I don't talk bad about other tradespeople, but that's just not saying anything at all. So with the fuse removed, I'm just going to quickly check to make sure this insulation is dead. This isn't the correct safe isolation procedure. However, I did carry that out, but it's not in the video. It takes too long. So I'm going to do is literally just undo them all, pull them all out and just basically start again. Get that receiver whipped off the wall because the new one isn't like for like. Open up the new Neometis, comes with everything you need, comes with the receiver, instructions, batteries, screws, everything you could want really. If you're unfamiliar with it, little wiring diagram on the back. Needs permanent live neutral earth. LS will go to three, LR will go to four. So a little bit of trace work. This cable goes to your switch through spur, so that's our power in, so three core, live neutral earth. And then that other one is live neutral earth to the boiler. One's LS, one's LR. So once you start narrowing it down like that, it, it just makes a little bit more sense. Looks, looks a, less a little less scary, I guess. 
I'm going to crimp these just to make it look a bit nicer. That's a bit easier to work with. Get a new one fixed a little bit higher. Might have took 15 minutes more just to make it look a little bit neater by crimping all those, putting it in, but it'll be there, you know, a fair few years, so why not? And we'll just simulate that to that. So there's the wiring diagram. So we've got LS on three, LR on four. Then you can check again in the PCB. So LS is gray, LR is black, which is the same in the receiver now. So new three amp fuse. There ain't no cowboys around here. Let's pop that back in there. Turn it on. Boiler fires up, so it should be. Should have had permanent life from the start. Even with the receiver missing, the boiler still has permanent life. That's how it should be. So just so you can see, 240 on permanent live in. And we're getting 240 on LS as well, which is how it should be because LS comes from the boiler. And we got nothing on LR because obviously the receiver front isn't on. Boiler was lit up, but we'll check it anyway. 240 on permanent live. 240 on LS. Nothing on LR yet because I haven't put the front cover on. These couldn't be any easier to pair. Pressing hold the RF test button until it starts flashing. <laughs> like that. Pressing hold the RF on that. And that'll tell you when it's paired. <laughs> Again, it's hard to do one hand. Bang it to constant. Just turn it up, little flame symbol. Boiler's fired. So for the 16th time, 240 on permanent live, 240 on LS. Now we're getting 240 on LR, which is what's caused the boiler to fire. So it's made the complete loop. There we go. The receiver's got override on, but that's just telling you that it's connected and firing. Pop the programmable stat on a stand for the customer so he can move around, have it where he wants it. Boiler's firing. Another job we can close the door on. Happy days.